I got it set up right. I didn't do it right the first time. I had, I had to swap the phones that I was using. Don't you worry, though. I still got it rolling. All right. Let's see. Hey, there we are. All right. Clyde Ritter is here. Got a Pepsi. Oh, yeah. It's not better than Mountain Dew. Don't start me. Don't you be starting with me here. All right. Let's get these all moved around so we've got plenty of room to examine the die casts that come in. There we go. That's just a bundle of them. I got to pop them out of their boxes and whatnot. Take a look. Make sure they're all good and golden. Hey, Garrett. Welcome in. Um... I'll let you guys keep funneling in. Going to give it another couple minutes. While we're here, we're going to pop open a nice uh, beverage. Wait a minute. You guys are only getting to see my wonderful koozie. That is a pretty cool koozie, though. That is a Casey Kane koozie for his sprint car that he's running last year. Last year's sprint car. No. Sorry, that is this year's. Ordered first two elites from Harvick's wins. August has been surreal. <laughs> I bet. I bet. With the how did I end up with so many Harvick fans in here? As an Elliott fan, it is kind of funny how I mean I've got a lot of a lot of guys that watch this channel that are Harvick fans. It's kind of funny. It's not what I would have expected. I can tell you that. Let's see. That one's a little. Oh boy. I got some of these to look at. Make sure they're all good to go. There's some of these that are a little uh, a little beat up. All right, that one looks good. Okay, well, uh, let's see. Did I see Kyle Larson's Phoenix win? Um, hello. Oh, sorry, hold on. Hello. Uh, but yes, I haven't gotten the Elite yet. Mine's mine are a little behind. I gotta I gotta get some of this stuff moving first, uh, and then I got that next. That'll be on my next group coming in. Um, let's see here. Got my first three new next-gen diecast yesterday. Uh, Larson, Cindric Menards, and Briscoe car I got already. Very nice. Good grabs. Um, there is one that's a little interesting in this group that I'll have to show off, too. Um, but I think what I'll do... Where's my little... I have a little screwdriver. There it is. Uh, just helps me pop open the uh, boxes safely. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. But we're going to get a nice, close look at a few of these. Um... Uh, a few of these next gens, a few of these uh, other ones. Yeah, I dropped one already. What can I say? Uh, and a few of the other ones and kind of go from there. So, All right. Well, welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now that we are all here, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just pop this one out of its box quick. This is a Kyle Larson Phoenix Win 164th. The 124ths are coming. I am excited. Um, I know there's a couple of you guys waiting on them, but they are coming. And as soon as they get here... Uh, they will be going out, um, but yes, we do have the 164th Phoenix win. We got the yellow banner. We got the shredded tire back here. The only thing I will say that might make this better, obviously having the windshield confetti, but the other one would be um, having the uh, rubber tires. You can shred the tire, but uh, we got hiring technicians, all the wins over there. So uh, I will say the Phoenix win looks pretty darn good I, I think compared to last year's phoenix win not as much detail on the front but the the rear corner panel burnout's a good one there so um so yeah that one i would say i i would probably say this one is uh nah probably i don't want to say superior because i think this one has the better playoff banner uh versus elliot's but obviously as an elliot fan i'm going to be biased so but yeah, honestly, a really good looking 164th. Just the confetti fits pretty well on it. Uh, but again, that's it, it is a, a good example of why I like the 164th or uh, the 124th is the the windshields do actually have the confetti on them, um, which I think is kind of a bigger deal. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm just gonna set that off to the side. Now we've taken a look at it. I have to take photos for the website, but I will have Kyle Larson Phoenix wins available. Um, on the website here i gotta get all the pictures done and then you'll see them up probably later by later tonight they'll be uh up and available so all right next one we are gonna take a look at here is going to be kevin harvick's bush light uh what is it called bush light hunt for bush that's what it's called it's called the hunt for bush uh and this is in the 164th metal chassis um i will say guys the 164th metal chassis of the new next gen cars really it doesn't have the rubber tires anymore so it's just down to a metal chassis 
they have a decent weight to them, but unfortunately, I just don't think the quality is worth it. So I think we're going to go to plastic chassis this year round. So I will no longer be holding the 164 metal chassis. I have a few. Um, I got this one right here for you Harvick fans. So I do have a few metal chassis 164s, but uh, the rest of them, we're going to be switching over to plastic chassis um, because I'll show you the differences and it's not very much. But this one here is the Hunt for Bush car. You can see we got the nice bush light. I love playoff banners. I always have uh, the nice bright yellow banners there, but um, the car itself has kind of a weird look to it. It was, I think it was camo up top, but it has a weird looking camo to it. Like it's almost too bright and almost faded out. But, um, yeah, so this is one that came in, um, and I, I, like I said, I, I've been doing these 164th metal chassis all last year. Um, they said they're more expensive. They're, they're actually not, they're about five bucks more than the regular, but this next coming year, I'll show you why, but I think we're going to go down to plastic chassis. Uh, but yeah, so it's still a really cool Harvick car. And here's what I'll say about Kevin Harvick's cars. They make like I shouldn't say they make, he has run about a hundred different paint schemes uh, in the last year. And it's downright ridiculous. Like I have a box of Harvick cars from this last year and I swear there's 15, 16, 17 cars in there. And there's only 36 races. So he only ran the same paint scheme like twice. It's crazy. Speaking to Kevin Harvick and running a bunch of paint schemes, why not? Let's throw another Kevin Harvick paint scheme out there because literally he has another one that he hadn't run yet. This is the car that, um, well, you know what? It's time for me to get my teases into the Harvick fans. This is the car that ran at the Charlotte Roval when he wrecked himself, avoiding Chase Elliott after he attempted to wreck him. So, yes, um, this is the car. You'll notice there's no banner on the windshield. It is a f This is an error along every single car. Like, not the 124s, but the 164th plastic and metal chassis both have this issue where there's no banner on the windshield. I don't understand how they made that mistake. It actually kind of bugs me. There's no purple, um, no purple wind, uh, what am I talking about? Window net. No purple, or purple, pink. No pink window net either. So this one just, I don't know, this one's kind of just a fluky flaw. Um, you know, I think it would be, um, I think it would be nice if we had the, uh, the pink window net and the banner, but unfortunately it is missing it. It's a good paint scheme, honestly. Outside of that, the paint scheme of black and white looks pretty darn solid, but, um, yeah, without that banner, it, it really doesn't look all that great. Uh, somebody was just asking if I have the subway car. I got it right here. I have an Elite, and then I have a metal chassis 164th. So, yeah, that one has the banner on it. That's the thing. It's crazy. The, that one has the playoff banner. The Hunt for Bush has the playoff banner, but this one didn't. Can't explain it. I don't understand why that happens. So, but yeah, overall, um, you know, even though it's missing a, a thing there for the Mobile One fan vote, um, you know, Still a good paint scheme. All right, so that one is now out of the way. Now we are done with our 2021s. It's on to the next gen cars. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to be taking a look at the... Um, who do we want to look at first? Actually, I'll let you guys take the vote. Here are your options right there. So between those options, you guys tell me which one I should pull out of the box first. Set that one over there. All right, let's see here. I got a Jones. We got a Blaney. So we got a Burton. We got Jones, Blaney, and Burton. We got one vote for each at the moment. Trying to look at these cars, make sure I don't see any major defects in them in the paint. I do have one that's going to have to probably go back. It's pretty rough. That one's pretty solid. I can let that... So there's three good ones there. Jones, Jones, Jones. Well, actually, that's a double vote there. Briscoe or Harvick. Larson. Well, let's see. Briscoe. Briscoe is second. Don't oh, two Briscoes. Three different Briscoes. All right, guys, it's going to be Briscoe. Okay. So now that we know who it is, I need to go ahead and pop one of these out of its box. Now, the first thing I will say is this is the new metal chassis 164s for the next gen car. Um, I guess I'll just leave that as a backdrop because I'm going to show you guys up close. But here is the, uh, the Chris, why am I saying Christopher Busher? Thanks a lot, Dale Jr. This is the Chase Briscoe Mahindra Tractors Ford Mustang. I've already taken a look at this at uh, the track at Gateway way back 
in uh, June when it first came out. I was able to snag one at the hauler. This one is noticeably heavier. Like, it's it's got solid uh, weight to it, but you can see the wheels are plastic. So underneath, um, if you can kind of see there, it is a metal chassis. You see how that's all metal underneath. But so outside of its weight, uh, plastic wheels. So not 100% sure what the draw is to these anymore, honestly. Uh, you know, this one's... $14.99, the other ones are $9.99, so to me, it seems like for that extra five bucks, you're only getting a little more weight. Um, I don't know that that's going to make a big difference. With the rubber tires, it might have, and it had better rims, but without those features, I just don't know that this has much to offer. So, I said, this is why I think I'm going to be going back to the 164th in plastic, so... Um, but yeah, the Chase Mahindra tractor car looks really good. I actually really enjoy that paint scheme. Um, I think it's probably one of the better... Uh, next gen paint scheme so far that we've seen um and i'm definitely not uh, not as disappointed with this one as some of the other next gen cars but uh yeah so that is our chase briscoe one um let's go ahead and move on to our next car that'll be on the list uh let's see who else do we have voting here 43 i like i see a lot of jones guys I didn't say no spamming, but yes, I like I like his thing. No, no spamming is good. No racial comments is good. No swearing is good. Being respectful, uh, and then like and subscribe. Yep, I like it. I can get on board with all that. Um, all right, so we got Jones here. Where's Jones? Why am I looking at the wrong car? Where's Jones? Uh, there it is. There's an Eric Jones car. I knew it had to be in here. Um, there we go. There. Oh, that came right off. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so the Eric Jones car is on its way out. We'll take a look at it here. So here is Eric Jones, number 43 Focus Factor, uh, Chevy Camaro. This is the second Camaro we've seen in the next-gen format. Uh, you can see we do have nice big Ford Focus, or not Ford, nice Focus Factor logo on the hood. Uh, the number moved way too far forward. Um, and here's the thing. Uh, Hendrick has some sheet metal up from Indianapolis, and you can get the door of Kyle Larson's wrecked car from Indy, but the number's cut off because it's too far forward. So once again, this is where I will tell you the numbers are too far forward. You can slide them back a little bit and get away with them, but you can't can't get away with it where it's at currently. Uh, but yeah, so here's that Focus Factor car. Oh, a little green sitting there. Does that come off? Is that gonna come off or do I gotta inspect that closer? Mm, I think that's a paint flaw. So you can see right there on the number, I got a little paint flaw. That's what I'm checking right now up close. And it does not appear that that is a, uh, something that is going to come off. So this one may end up, uh, may end up going back a little bit. I don't know. This one, it's not a huge, huge deal. This one may just go in the defect pile. Um, there's unfortunately a lot of those. So, <laughs> um, how much for L Larson's door listed for? I have no idea. It's on the Hendrick site. I think it's like a, I don't know, a thousand dollars or something for the whole door. Maybe it's more than that, but it, uh, like I said, that they have some Elliott rule or some Elliott doors on there too. And the problem is it's just, um, you know, it's just missing the, um, the number, like it's cut part way off. So, um, you know, that's definitely a, a, a problem there, um, that we have with, let's see here. I cannot pin that one, by the way. Uh, so, um, yeah, just keep put that um somewhere else on there um but yeah i tried to pin it doesn't let me do it from the phone you can do it on pc but i'm on the phone so uh but yeah so good good solid uh car for the for eric jones here and uh oh there it is i was gonna say i knew i had an eric jones car here and so i gotta set one over here so i have it for photographs here in just a little bit all right so next on the list i think i saw some people looking for a larson uh, and because I just saw him run at the Knoxville Nationals this last weekend, so even though I wasn't at the race, uh, I did still get to see Larson run. That's got to count for something, right? Um, but yeah, so we're going to take a look at Kyle Larson's 164th. Uh, this one's actually really hard to open, so I'm going to go to this one. I always look at the boxes to see if one of the flaps is partially open because it makes it easier to make sure I don't ding the box up. And, um, you know, because I'm doing it for photographs, I want to make sure it's in as good a shape as possible for whoever uh, ends up getting it at some point. And so I look for ones that are kind of like this. See how that one's kind of already pre-opened just a little bit? Let's see if I can get it closer. There you go. See how that's pre-opened a little bit? I, I always look for the any box I can find that looks like that because it pops right open. And I don't have to worry about, you know, dinging up someone's box. I try to make sure I keep them in as good a shape as possible when I uh, take my photos. All right. So 
This is Kyle Larson's HendrickCars.com. Uh, this is, I actually have two of these technically, or not two of them, but I have the, uh, here's the plastic chassis right here. Uh, but like I said, the only difference is underneath here is plastic versus metal. Um, outside of that, it literally looks the exact same. Like windshield banners and all, I don't see any differences on here. So um, it is a good solid car. It does roll really nice. You can almost hear it. You know, it, it feels a little heavier that way. But um, but overall, it's, like I said, it's not very different. It, I don't think it's worth the extra money to go with the metal this year. I think the other ones were pretty cool. But um, I, I definitely think that this one is a... Um, I definitely think this one is, is probably going to be better off uh, in the plastic chassis with all basically all the next-gen cars. So it's unfortunate because... Wait, that's a plastic chassis. I, I about put the wrong car back. We'll put that back up on its, its pedestal there. Thing, but, um, but yeah, so that's the Kyle Larson Hendrick Cars one. Uh, let's see. Next on the list, let's go ahead and look at Ryan Blaney. Um, so Ryan Blaney's car here. Uh, let's see. I haven't found it quite yet. Where do I go with Ryan Blaney? Oh, there it is. I knew it had to be over here somewhere. Mm, that box looks pretty good. Let me see if I can find a better box to pull open. That one's pretty good. I can pull that one open. Okay. So we're going to take a look at Ryan Blaney's car. Like I said, this is another one that I have reviewed already uh, in the 164th plastic chassis when they first came out because I got them at uh, Gateway. So, um, yeah, here is the... Ryan Blaney Menards car. This is the, let's see, what is the actual sponsor? Libman, whatever that means. So this is the Libman car. You can see it right there. We got our number 12, way too far forward again. Um, but yeah, so we got number 12 up there. We got Libman Menards. You can see it's got a bright green front to it. You can see that little white spot there. I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret because there are unfortunately way too many flaws on these cars on a regular basis. However, this is how you fix something like that. See that little white dot there? Let's get it nice and close. That white dot is a little chip. You come up here with this big marker, and you just go dot, 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 and gone. And just like that, it's gone. And honestly, that is a good way to do that with any of your 164ths. Sometimes with age, that kind of stuff happens, but you can see not noticeable at all and that is a way to fix just the little flaws like if you've got something and i'm gonna show you a flaw right here uh which car was it it's not this one is it no it's not this one it's a different one where did it go i'm lost boys uh there it is here it is so look at this one this one has you can see a huge number of flaws on the on the front there there's two big chips the number has a big flake in it um i think the right side looks okay yeah the right side isn't too bad but that one that one's pretty rough on the left side. That one's not really fixable. You know, that's something that is right there in the number and then right there on the side. Can't do much with that, but when it's a little flake or a little tiny piece on a black spot like this on the 12 car, you can fix it, make it go right back to pristine because outside of that, this car's in really good shape. Like, you know, the decaling is, is really good, just the one little thing. So, uh, but yeah, so that's Ryan Blaney's uh, Menards car. And uh, with, a, with most of these, I just have them in the 164th metal chassis available. Now, that being said, uh, there are a couple I still have the plastic chassis with. Uh, one of those being the, um, let's see, what one is that? I have the plastic chassis available for Larson and two Cindrix and Harvick, I believe. Okay, I had to just do one more little touch-up on that with a little marker, and now that one is good to go. So that one will actually be in the photograph. So when you guys look on the website and you see the photograph, it's going to be that car. So you can see, look up nice and close and see how good a job I did, I guess. Okay, so the next one is going to be, uh, let's go with Harrison Burton's car. I'm going to pull out a good one uh, to take the photo of, and then I'm going to pull out that other one just to show you how bad the defect on it is. Um, and then kind of, you know, just so you guys can see kind of what stuff to look out for when you're trying to find a die cast. Uh, there's actually a couple of bad ones. It looks like I got a Cindric with some problems too. Uh, but we'll take a look at them here. So this is the Harrison Burton car that is in good shape. You can see nice gold uh, numbers there, all clean and crisp. Uh, the front looks good and crisp. One white dot there you can see right there in the splitter. Um, or no, that's a reflection. 
Sorry, that's a reflection. It's all good. Um, but you go to the back. That looks all good to go. No big flaws back here. Um, then you go back around to the right side, and we don't really have any huge issues back here either. So uh, this one's in good shape. You know, no real problems with that one. But if you look at this other one I'm about to pull up. Uh, which way should I open this box? So we'll pull this one out of its box. Um, normally I only pull one for photos, but this one's in bad enough shape. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Uh, so this one's going to have to find a new home somewhere. Uh, potentially I'll just fix it with some markers or stuff, or I'll save it for some downhill races or something that I do later on. Uh, you can see here, big flake right there in the number on that number 21. You can see it in the upper part there, just a big flake. Two big flakes right there in the white, big red dots underneath you can see. Uh, outside of that, honestly, the rest of the well, now the rest of the car is terrible. Uh, the rest of the car isn't too bad. Um, you know, you can see it's pretty decent on the right side. Um, so it's not the biggest deal in the world here on the left. I don't know if it's enough to send it all the way back. With the number flake, it might be. I don't know. I'll contact and find out. But you can see there is a flake in that number and then two up there. A um, couple little dots back there. I don't know if those are in part of the body. I feel like they are. Um, but there are three little dots there on the back. You can kind of see them under the paint. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of flaw that you want to just watch for. Again, not a huge deal, but if you're paying 15 bucks for a 164th, you definitely want to make sure you get a good one. You don't want to get one that, uh, looks like that. So, um, I'm actually going to pull this one out so I can save it for my thumbnail. Set this with it. And I'll just go down to this mini. So the Harrison Burton is going to be out of the out of the backdrop for a little bit. Uh, okay. So what do we got next? I think we got just two or three left. Uh, they are the Cindric 164th discount tire, the Harvick 164th gear wrench, and the Cindric 164th Richmond. All right, here. I'm going to read a couple chats quick while we're here. Um, I got a 2017 race used autograph Chase Elliott back bumper to sell. Oh, cool. Oh, for, oh, to sell. Yeah. Well, that's a cool, cool one to see a uh, nice Napa back bumper. Uh, so sad to cringe grandpa one. <laughs> See, there you go. We got some Elliot fans and some Harvick fans. Um, all right. So here's the Cindric one. We're going to go ahead and pop this one out of here. All righty to the bottom of the chats. All right. I'm all caught up. All right. So here is the Cindric Menards card. This one has the Richmond color, uh, paint on the front. You can see on here, um, pretty clean honestly it looks pretty darn good um the silver rims on the inside that's actually how it looks there it is that was the flaw i was looking for i think that's a decal issue here yeah that's a decal flaw here so you can see right here there's a big decal cal flaw right over the menards i'm um, not sure what it is it looks like the sponsor says oh gosh what does that say I think it's the Maytag one. So here you can see it. So there you can see the Maytag stuff there on the D and the R. You can kind of see that. It's an actual, what it is, it's a decal that got kind of double lapped and then um, got cured on there. So it's actually a definite, definite flaw. Um, so yeah, this one may uh, may end up going back as well because it's a clear, clear flaw issue there. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't like that, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, uh, so other than that, though, the card does look pretty darn solid. This one, uh, will not be allowed to be used for photos. He will go into the pile of others, like with that other, um, Harrison Burton car, which is the to be determined what happens with them. All right. So next on our list, we're going to go to Kevin Harvick's gear wrench car. We actually just saw the review of the plastic one. Not that long, uh, for self promote. What are we talking about there? Um, oh, yeah, I don't, I mean, there's no way for someone to message you there. Um, so I, I'll give you the warning here. Uh, but otherwise, like, go to a Facebook page or something with that. I don't, there's no way for someone to contact you if they're interested in the car. So you have to do that through a page because this is on, like, YouTube chat. I, the only thing I have for that is my own contacts. So, um, yeah, if you want to post it, post it over there. There's just, there's no way for somebody to, to contact you even if they are interested. Um, Ordered a bunch of 124 race versions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I also have a lot of those coming. Uh, so it's going to be a fun fun few weeks here. It's going to get busy. Uh, but you can see we got our number four gear wrench car. Really clean. This one actually is in really good shape. Uh, so there you can see the gear wrench car. We got our number four. A little high. See how high up that is? It's almost like up on the post. 
on both sides. I think that's normal for this paint scheme. I just don't like it, like slide it down a little bit. But as you can tell, I have issues with the numbers and I'm not going back on it. You know, I'm just going to continue to have issues with the numbers and I'm just, you know, okay with that. All right, now we're moving on to the discount tire car. And what do you know? We got another decal flaw. Boy, we're going to we're going to definitely be moving back to plastic chassis. Uh, oof -da. This one they did. Don't, don't, don't look very good. All right, let's go ahead and pop that out of there. Okay, so here's one that has some flaws. I got that popped out of its box. Now I'm going to pop out the good one. Um, and one will be used for photos. The other one goes in the pile with the rest. So here's the good looking one. Uh, this is our number two discount tire car for Austin Cindric. Uh, you can see pretty darn clean on each side. The number two right up there. And um, nothing too bad, so it doesn't look too bad. Um, as you can see on the hood, uh, we do have our little vents there. So that's a nice little bonus. Uh, spoilers are a little tall. <laughs> Definitely a little tall on the spoiler. But um, but yeah, so that's this car. That one looks good and clean. All you know, nothing, no issues on that car. Um, let's slide this over here so I have it for photos. And then we'll take a look at the one I have a problem with, which is right here. This one you can see we've got a little bit on the discount right here. Um, I'm trying to see, does that actually wipe off? Sometimes it's a it's an issue where it just needs to get wiped off. No, it doesn't appear, so it appears we got a big decal defect there. And the same goes on the right side. You can see we got a bunch of, you know, bunch of gunk right there on the on the number. So not too bad. That's a problem. This they're not terrible, but you can see we got pretty noticeable mark there. Pretty noticeable, not pretty noticeable. This one's not as bad. If it was just this side, it probably would be fine. You know, it'd be okay to go somewhere. With this side having that big of a defect, um, yeah, that one probably ain't gonna make it. So, so yeah, uh, unfortunately, three three non good looking ones. Now, to be fair, I have looked at all of them through the boxes, and they haven't looked terrible. Uh, the only other one that I had kind of some questions on, and you guys can maybe give you your opinions here. The 14 there, you can see there's a tiny mark above it. I don't think that's enough to send anything back. But, um, yeah, that, that was the only other issue I, I had seen. But now we're going to go ahead and slide some of this out of the way because we need to get ready for some 124th scale coming in. Uh, we're going to have, ooh, I don't even know how, how to count how many are coming. I think I've got two, four, six, seven different versions coming in to take a look at. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at them here, but I got to clear off the 164 first so we can dig in to the, the I don't want to say the better cars, but yeah, the, the better cars. I'll say it. I like 124th. I've always been a big 124th guy. The detail's been better. That being said, I do have a, uh, I do have a love in my heart for 164. So I have a shoebox full of old ones, but uh, I actually got rid of all my authentics not that long ago. Just didn't need them anymore. So Okay, get this Briscoe out of the way. Get a couple boxes out of the way. And we are ready for some 124th scales. So, on the 124th side, we're going to be taking a look at Kyle Bush's Pocono Win. That was the first one out. Uh, now, I actually have one of these spoken for. Uh, somebody had a pre order. I haven't been able to get a hold of them, so I've got to shoot them a text message, let them know I've uh, sent them a PayPal invoice. But uh, otherwise, worst case scenario. Um, we'll see if I can get a hold of them. So, uh, all right. This car is a cool car because of the story behind it too. All right. So here is the Kyle Busch Pocono one. Uh, this is the car he won with last season. What is our production number? 451. So Kyle Busch got 451 of these made. And let me go ahead and I'm not going to unscrew it from the base quite yet. I'm not quite ready to do the review. Uh, mostly because I don't have a place to go with it. <laughs> um, all right, so let's set that box there. So here is the Pocono win. Uh, let's go ahead and shut the hood. You can see it is the M&M's Minis car. Uh, you can see we've got our number 18. It's Pocono, so it's very, very clean. But this car was the one he lost third gear in, I believe, uh, and was just stuck in fourth the entire time, which was actually more fuel efficient. So when it turned into a fuel mileage race, him coming in and topping off and being stuck in gear, basically gave him a giant advantage to winning the race, which was just very cool because it's not typically how Kyle Busch wins races. Um, you can see a little bit of buildup, but otherwise it's pretty dang clean. <laughs> like, that's the problem with this car. It is really freaking clean. Uh, you can see we do have, uh, let's see, didn't 322, but um, 
yeah, definitely, uh, d definitely a car that's really, really clean. Um, it's unique. There's definitely some cool parts with it, but unfortunately, it's just super duper clean. So, not a ton of raced version stuff, but it is a new paint scheme. Kyle Busch has won in the same paint scheme like tw had a, since 2018, I want to say. No, 2019, he won in the same scheme twice. But yeah, he he tends to do that where he wins in all these different paint schemes all the time. So, uh, but yeah, then he won again in a different paint scheme this year. So, what can you say? So yeah, that is our Pocono car. Uh, let's go ahead and put that back. This one looks all good to go, good to ship. So that one I will mark as good and ready to go. Because as I said, I've got one spoken for and I've got one on the site. And that is not one that's going to be planned to stay in my collection. There's a lot of them that are going to go on the site. So if you are interested in looking at some legacy, I'm going to call them legacy, but some raced wins that are back from 2015, 2016, they are all going up on the site. Almost my entire collection, quote unquote, technically, will be on the site, uh, but you're gonna see cars on the site that are for way more than they're probably worth. That's so that way, uh, if they sell, I can find another one later. That's all it's for. So uh, yeah, if you look on the site and you see like a, a Kevin Harvick 2011 Coke 600 win for $900, that's because I'm gonna get another one if I, if it sells. But you know, that's kind of the point. So um, yeah, you, if you see that, don't be alarmed. That's what it's for. It's basically if someone really wants it, they can have it, but I'm gonna make sure I got enough to go get another one. Uh, but then there's going to be some other ones that are much more reasonably priced. Okay, so that was Kyle Busch's Pocono win. Now we're going to move on to a... Uh, actually, this will be one that I get to do a review on, probably tomorrow's review. This is going to be Kyle Larson's 2019, 2021 Bristol win. And if you guys remember, I was at the race. So naturally, this one actually has a spot in a case already picked out for it. Um, so this box will actually probably stay open because it's going to go in a whole different type of spot. Um, but here we go. There is the Kyle Larson Bristol win. Um, looks really, really good. Looks like the front and rear suspension got good function to it. Hood gap looks pretty good. Uh, we got our playoff banner. Um, red's a little bright, but it's still all right. You can see all the markings on the right side here. That looks fantastic. That's from when Harvick and him, uh, what do we say? Harvick kind of tried to like right hook him. I don't know if it was intentional, but he just about right hooked Larson on that race. Um, but yeah, you can see we got some really good buildup and stuff. So this car is going to be pretty darn cool. I think it's going to be one of Kyle Larson's most valuable cars. I think this is going to be one of the most popular wins from his championship season. I think it's got the most race detail. I think the paint scheme is pretty cool. And I think the event was very memorable. So um, that's always three big keys that help cars, you know, hold a lot more value. So definitely excited to get the review done on this one but um yeah i have two of those in uh or i should say two i have one that'll go on the site the other one's uh going for uh, my collection and then i always have one that goes in for my sister's collection because she also gets the races that we've seen in person okay so that is the larson one um this one i guess i could put the box over here for the moment okay so the next one we're going to take a look at is going to be, all right, there we go. This is going to be Josh Berry's, uh, why am I forgetting the name? Las Vegas. Josh Berry's Las Vegas win. And I actually have extras of these because I had uh, uh, some buyers back out of some stuff. Uh, you know, times are tough, so sometimes that stuff kind of happens. But um, I will have a few of these available out there. So if you're interested in looking for one of these, I'll show you here quick. Uh, but this one is actually the autographed edition, the one I'm unboxing currently. Not this one. Uh, so yeah, that one I still got to take a picture of later, but we'll, uh, we'll do the non -aut or the autographed version first. So there's the, uh, the number one. This is actually um, technically a Nets car. Um, you can see we got our number one. We got Pilot. Look at all that. Red. We got some nice tire marks there on the left side. We got, uh, if you've got a trucker, or if you've got it, a trucker brought it. So paying homage to the uh, the truckers out there. You can see a signature there on the windshield with the Dale Jr. hologram. And then um, on the right side, a lot cleaner. Not quite as much over here on the right side of this car. And you got hashtag thank a trucker on the back with the rookie stripes because it was his rookie season. Uh, but yeah, this car is pretty cool. It's got some good detail right there on the left side, and it's kind of neat because it still has a net on the windshield or on the rail, but it has Barry on the windshields. So just kind of weird how it's got one, but not the other. Like usually it's the other way around. You'll sometimes put the driver there and you'll put Barry or you'll leave their, their stuff in the windshield banners. But in this case, they did the opposite. So yeah, kind of an interesting one. But yes, we do have uh, Josh Barry's second career win. 
And I actually do still have some of his first career wins on the site as well. So if you're looking, you can probably get a two for one. Well, not a two for one, but you can get a, uh, you know, get both of his wins up there on the website. Like uh, has been mentioned in the chat, you can check it out though, but make sure you do, anytime you're getting stuff off the website, use that promo code RACECRAZE. Um, I had to drop the free shipping, but I did a 10% discount instead. So that will um, usually be most, most of what the shipping would have been. But it also, if you get a lot of cars, it gives you a bigger discount than what the shipping would have been. So there's, you know, kind of a, a little good, a little bad, unfortunately. But yes, that is still a thing. Okay. So we don't need to take a look at the other, uh, the other Vegas win autograph because we've already looked at that one. So let's take a look at, oh, this should be a fun one. How about this? How about this? This is going to be a good one, guys. I think you guys are going to love this. That is Richard Petty's 200th career win, NASCAR Classic. So this one's going to be a fun review. I actually forgot that I had a couple of these coming um, because I didn't remember when I when I had a pre-order for it, but I did. Uh, so this is going to be a really cool car to do a review on. And um, for those of you that collect any of the NASCAR Classics and any of, any of that stuff, Action. Let's go ahead and set that there. Get these cards out of the way. All right. Apparently, they didn't do winner stickers. <laughs> Not really a surprise. All right, so let's slide that out. Uh, they do actually have a race win card or a, a detail card here, so that's kind of neat. Uh, let's see. July 4th, 1984. And he led 53 laps that day. So, well done, Mr. Richard Petty, the king. Um, and, yeah, wait, was this Richmond? No, what? The Firecracker 400. 160. No, yeah, there's Daytona. I don't know why someone said Richmond. I think it was the Gordon one they made a Richmond of. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and slide that box cover off. And here is our Pontiac. Um, what is it? Is it Pontiac? I don't actually know what, what model it ran. I'm not real. I, I wasn't born in the 80s, so I don't know what these models are. But here you can see we do at least get a nice big donut mark there. Uh, a little bit of a couple dents there on that side. Nice chrome rims. Um we got the blue interior. We got our window net in red there. A uh, couple of marks on the Goodyear tires. Not a ton, but there are a couple there. Uh, the trunk does not open, so that used to probably open. Let's go ahead and see what the engine detail looks like on these, because I bet they're going to look kind of neat. There we go. For those of you wondering, I'm, I'm tapping on the base, not the car. But there's our engine detail. So we do have uh, a radiator... Uh, air filter, a couple of valve covers, not a ton of stuff, but there is at least some, some stuff there. Um, overall, it's a pretty solid looking car. It looks very, very neat. Um, it's clean for a raced version, but it's also dirty at, at a couple of spots back here for a raced version. So it's kind of a mix of both, um, but definitely a unique car. This is definitely going to be a cool one. So can't wait to do the review on this one because I think this one's going to look pretty sweet. Okay, so we're gonna get that one put back in the box. Let's take some chats while we're here. Alrighty. Sorry guys, if I haven't been catching any of your chats, I've been a little uh, busy here, so uh, just trying to keep up. Alrighty. So that one is ready to go. That is a fully inspected car ready for the sale shelf. Okay, let's look at some chats here. Uh, not a fan of the minis. Uh, not sure what the minis are. Uh, three ways behind on the Authentics. Yeah, I had to give up on Authentics. Um, at one time, I used to try it, but unfortunately, they just got so hard to keep catching up on and hoping that you could find them at your, you know, at your WalMarts and stuff, and it just didn't work. Right. So the next car. Uh, let's see, I already took a look at that one. I suppose the next one we could do is the Road America win. This is going to be Kyle Busch's 2021 Road America car. Now, that being said, I actually just had somebody pick up a couple of Kyle Busch Xfinity wins last year. So, um, I am officially out of the Nashville win. I, I do not have any more Nashville wins for Kyle Busch. That was his 200th Xfinity win. So um, I have to double check and see if I can get any more, but I think I am out as far as that one goes. Um, all right, cool. They actually had this one prepackaged correctly. They had the cards up in the insert. 
But um, yeah, so here is the Road America one. You can see it is the M&M's Ice Cream number 54. And we're gonna do a little uh, video where it has all five. You can see in the background, we do have the Kyle Busch set back there, but this was, oh gosh, win number six on the season, or not six, but I wanna say it's the second to last one. His last one was, I believe the, or this was maybe his last one, I can't remember. Either way, it, it happened. It took place. So, uh, yeah, we have the M&M's minis, though. Uh, a couple little marks on this side, but otherwise, it's a pretty clean car. For It's a road course car. you got a windshield wiper, but um, it is cool that he won in five different paint schemes. You know, if he's going to go five for five and win all of his Xfinity starts, at least he better go out like that, you know, with five totally different cars. I just think that looks pretty darn cool. So, uh, yeah, but that one is, uh, that was actually the last. I think I only have one of those as well, so... Um, those Kyle Busch uh, race wins from, from last year could end up being a tough one to find. Oh, we got a vacuum that just started there. Okay, so the next one we're going to take a look at. Let's go ahead. Um, that's right, I have an ARC of the Kyle Larson Bristol coming in. I actually had somebody who was looking for all those ARC wins, and I, I haven't been able to get a hold of them. I think they messaged me, but I can't find the messages, which is really unfortunate because I... Um, I definitely uh, have cars that they were looking for. So the next one is going to be another one that I was in person vis uh, viewing. This is the Chandler Smith first career truck win at Bristol from last season. And this is probably, or dare I say it, the best Bristol, not best Bristol, sorry. The best Bristol one's going to be AJ Allmendinger's most likely, even though it could have been so much better. You know, it's still going to be really good. Um... No, but this one is going to be Chandler Smith's Bristol win. And this is probably the best truck win of the year. Uh, you can see we got a lot of wheel marks here on the left side. Uh, we do have safe light, auto glass. We got our number 18. We got playoff banner, playoff splitter, play playoff spoiler. Like I said, tire marks all over this right side. Over to the, or sorry, left side. This is the right side. This one also has tire marks all over it, including a couple spots right there. Uh, it's a matte finished truck, which means it still looks really good. You can see a little bit of the Bristol debris up on the front. Not too much. Got Safe Light up there, Camping World and all that jazz. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the DIN numbers are in the right side. That's where they are. DIN 146 for Mr. Chandler Smith. But, yes, I was in person to see this one, so this one goes into my personal collection here. But, uh, yeah, this is probably the best uh, race win truck of the year. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I think this one's pretty good. Okay. So that is the Chandler Smith one. Let's move on to our next truck. Not truck. I think it's a car. I gotta check. All right. So this one I'm not gonna even bother putting back in its big box because this one goes to my box. All right. So what do we got here? Yeah, that's that one. Actually, I think it's our last one. Yeah, this is our last one. Our last one is going to be Noah Gregson's 2021 Richmond race win. Second career, sorry, not second career win, second win of the season last year. Happened literally back to back with, yeah, you can hear that. That's a vacuum. It's a little unnecessary if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, so this is, oops, that's a little piece of that. This is Noah Gregson's Richmond win. Now, this one I will have my complaints with. Um, unfortunately, they didn't give us rear tires. He did burn them off. But I would have appreciated some chewed up tires because I can always take the tires off. But now it won't sit right because the rims are here. And the rims don't look right either because they have all these little pegs that help keep the tires looking a certain way. And because of all those little pegs, the rim doesn't even look right. So my options are basically grind down the rim or put a tire on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go out and find a couple tires, chew them up on a sander or something, just beat the tar out of them and then put them on so the car sits right. But... Um, yeah, the Richmond win looks pretty good. Doesn't have as much right side damage as uh, what the Darlington had, but at least on the front end, it has a decent amount. You can see this right front corner looks pretty darn good. Uh, across the front in general looks decent. You know, a couple little marks here or there, but not too much. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, his second win. Uh, he's now won three more times, four more times after this one in this paint scheme. So we got some good Noah Gregson cars coming. Can't wait to see all those. So, uh, yeah, that one will be uh, needing its photograph as well. All right. That vacuum is going nuts. All right. Hmm. There's a 
go. So I got that one put back. We are now, I believe, all wrapped up on new arrivals. That is kind of the new batch. I've got another huge batch coming, which does include Kyle Larson's Phoenix win. A lot of new 164ths. Um, I will, like I said, I will be swapping over from 164th metal to plastic. So uh, if you are a person who does like to collect those metal chassis, um, chances are those are not going to be uh, coming. I won't be carrying those as much anymore. Um, I haven't seen too many people that really like them. Uh, I guess if you're one of them, let me know. I can still get one, uh, but I'm just not going to get a, a whole the whole batch of uh, 164th like I used to. I'm going to do those in the plastic chassis. Um, I just think that's an easier way to do it uh, as far as having a good variety and then not having, you know, with the with it not having the rubber tires, I don't think the quality is any better. So, um, let's see, I think something's wrong with the chat here. It's not working. Live chat. There we go. Oh my gosh, sorry guys. Um, I was not able to see all these chats for a while. It, it literally paused it, and it's way back. So, um, all right, here we go. Wow, I got a lot of these. Okay, so here we go. Where do we start? You know what? If you got questions, put them in the chat now because I am definitely uh, not going to have a chance to get through all the rest of those. My chat froze for a long time. So, Denny Hamlin, Ultimate Fan, says all the Talladega wins, uh, I'm pretty sure, made MOQ. Yes, they did. Um, he also says, Am I going to be getting Jimmy's Icon Elite? I hadn't planned on uh, getting it. Um, if somebody is interested, I will absolutely offer it on the site. And then I will be. Um, I will be uh, putting the, what am I saying here? I'll do a review on it. That's what it is. Sorry, getting a little spacey. Um, let's see. What is my favorite die cast that I have? Uh, my personal favorite die cast is always this one right here. Got to see Chase Elliott win in person and got it signed at Bristol in my first trip there. So a lot of, a lot of good memories tied into that car. So uh, that specific car gets kind of the cake. Um, as far as my favorite, so there, I have a lot of good, a lot of cars I really like, but that's definitely probably like one that I would have a lot of, a lot of trouble getting rid of. Uh, let's see, what car do I have in the light up case? My current light up case is, um, let's see, what do I have in there currently? I have uh, Chase Elliott's Liquid Color Baja Blast and Liquid Color First Wind are the current two that are sitting in there. Um, Favorite? Oh, that's my favorite one is my signed Stenhouse car. Well, that's a good car. I've got two Stenhouse cars to my name. Uh, his first win, and I think it's autographed. And then his first start, which is in the 21 Wood Brothers car, is also autographed. But those are two really cool ones. How do I fit two? You can put them angled side by side, and it's a tight squeeze. But you can squeeze two. Uh, all right. All right, let's take a look at some more here. Um, favorite Casey Kane memory. Hmm. So my favorite Casey Kane memory. Ugh. Um, racetrack wise, I would have to say oddly enough, his 2004 season was one that was like full of heartbreak, but also still really good memories. Um, obviously, his final career win was another one. I mean, I think. If I'm being completely honest, without that win at Indianapolis in 2017, I don't know if I come back to NASCAR as hard as I did. I mean, I had I had been to the track at Kansas Fall Races kind of on and off, kind of randomly, not super heavy or anything like that. But when he won that Indy race, I got so hooked. I was it just like it gave me so much like rejuvenation and I went out and I I mean, I pre-ordered his race win in elite, his, you know, liquid color in elite. I started the diecast channel. I mean, I did not have that diecast channel until after he won. Uh, it, it literally just rejuvenated me. It was, I was so excited to get a Casey Kane car after, after so long. And, um, and so, yeah, I ended up starting a diecast channel and then getting a bunch of cars like that. And then, um, I would always still had a lot of Casey Kane cars, but, um, that was what really started getting me to get a lot of his cars. Um, but you know, it was, it was that moment that I think really helped rehook me into the sport. Cause after that, I bought tickets to go to Chicagoland. He was in the chase. That was the first race of the chase. I was going to go see it. Um, didn't do well, but you know, it was just, it was exciting to, to have that. So I think that would be probably one of my favorite memories just cause I think it really reintroduced me to the sport. All right, let's see here. Uh, 
What if you got a signed Chase Elliott diecast? Um, like I said, I have a couple of them that are already signed, uh, but I, I personally like to get them signed in person. Um, I used to get, I think I get a lot of Noah's pre-signed just because um, I eventually are going to make some customs I'd rather have signed. I don't want to carry a bunch of them. But And my sister likes to get her Noah cars signed in person, and so I carry her cars when we're at the track so that way she can get hers uh, or try to get some of hers signed. But... Um, but yeah, I, I'm generally I, I'm kind of going away from getting cars signed ahead of time if I can. There's certain cars that I like to get pre-signed, like that Almondinger car being dual autographed. That's really cool. Getting a door number was just a big bonus. But um, having those pre-signed, uh, certain cars that I've seen win in person, some of those I don't mind getting you know pre-signed. But um, yeah, I, I I think for the most part I, I've kind of laid off on the autographs a little bit. Uh, let's see, have the 2020 Auto Elliott Championship. That's a cool car. Uh, my favorite was meeting him at the, oh, uh, Volusia, I think it's how it is, Volusia for World of Outlaws. Yeah, I love, I mean, I got to see him race this weekend. The best part about dirt racing is the drivers are just so laid back. It seems like the dirt crowd isn't near as aggressive as the NASCAR crowd with autographs. You can much easier go up and talk to the driver and have an actual conversation, which is really cool. I mean, it's, it's really cool to be able to, uh, you know, to be able to chat with the guys instead of just have to, you know, be in a scrum full of people. Favorite diecast other than Elliot or Casey Kane? Um, well, it would have to be one that I've seen in person. Um, I really like that Almondinger duel door number. Um, Chicagoland finish, you know, those are the races I've seen in person would obviously all be on that list as well of uh, cars I really, really like. Um, I don't know that there's anything specific as far as one of them that kind of is a head and shoulders above the rest. If let's say I had to jump out of that group, I'm not, we're not talking my Daytona 500 set, you know, that side, I love that set. That sets off to the side. All the ones I've seen in person, that's a set, put it off to the side. Kane and Elliott wins, set those off to the side. So if I had to go outside of that whole realm, um, I would probably say like one of Gordon or Johnson's final wins, uh, like the Homestead, Johnson win, the Martinsville Gordon win. Uh, those are pretty cool. Um, you know, the Blaney Roval win's a pretty neat one. Uh, Blaney's first win, you know, there's kind of a whole bundle of them. I'm not really sure if I have a specific one that I would put head and shoulders in, in first. Okay, so my favorite diecast, 2012 Matt Kenseth Talladega win, the only NASCAR race I have been to. Well, you need to get back to some races. Although, if I remember right, you're in Australia, so that's a little harder. Um, but still, got to get you back there. Uh, Casey may not have won the Daytona 500 or the championship, but he won a Brickyard 400 and three Coca-Cola 600s. So people don't realize he was really good at those long races. Like, long races really suited him. Um, favorite diecast is my autographed 2019 Daytona 500 winner. First time at the race, and I met Denny. Uh, he was so nice to uh, so nice to me, and I know he isn't liked by everyone, but he is one of my favorites because of that. I actually have come around on Denny Hamlin. I was not a fan of him in uh, Martinsville in 2017. Um, not for I mean, he uh, obviously dumping Chase did not help, but when he got out of the car and said that, oh, he just lifted early, I was like, okay, that's that's garbage, man. So that part really that was where I'm like, okay, that's that's kind of not right. But his takes and the way he carries himself, starting a team and all that, I actually really like Denny Hamlin. Um, and frankly, this year, if Chase can't win the championship, I'm all on board with Denny getting it, even though he's run not well this year. Denny Hamlin is a championship caliber driver, um, and I think he, he should be one that eventually ends up with that championship. So uh, let's see. I have Elliott's Atlanta win elite autograph pre-ordered. Oof, it's going to be a hefty car, but it's going to be a cool one too, so... Um, yes, I have three Elliott wins on pre-order, and I have a regular Elite that I have to turn into his Pocono win. I have an autographed shirt by Donnie Schatz. I didn't know about the diecast at the time. I have his dirt truck, and I'm going to the Dirt Nationals at Belusia in February before the 500. Oh, that's awesome. Definitely. I, and the other thing I would recommend, uh, now here's the thing. If you're a big Donnie Schatz guy, this is the last diecast I have for Donnie Schatz. I actually had to do a little fixing on it. But this is the last one I've got left for this year. They're not making his Knoxville car, unfortunately. I'm a little bummed on that. But uh, I do have one of these. And the best place that you can get a driver to sign it, there's two spots that are really cool. You can get him to sign it right there on the hood, right there on that blank spot, or you just put it on this top wing and right over one of the logos. It still works. But getting a sprint car signed is a cool thing. I actually brought one sprint car wing down to see if I could get it signed by Kane. Didn't work out, but still cool. 
All right, so here we go. Next chat we have is um, I like Denny obviously, but if I go again, I'd love I'd hopefully meet him myself. Definitely, I mean that'd be a cool thing. Uh, oh, I missed the one above it. Uh, certainly, he's made mistakes, but every driver does. Absolutely, every driver makes mistakes. Um, as I said that one obviously cost my favorite driver at the time a chance at moving on, so that obviously you know, had to have, and it was his potential for, for his first win, which would have been huge. But, um, so yeah, I mean, as I said, I, that, that whole thing, it's, you know, there's always moments that you get a little irked at certain drivers for certain things, but, um, you know, I, I think there's, there's a certain thing where it's like, how does he race 99% of the other times? And when it's all good, it's all good to go. So, um, people need to go get over what happened at Atlanta. LaJoy will win soon. Um, I don't think anyone, I mean, anyone with a brain knows what Elliot did is completely acceptable in, in the modern racing age. I'm not a huge fan of long late blocks, but that's, I've seen blocks way worse than that. So, um, you know, I, I saw Blaney put Jones straight up in the wall. So, I mean, it's like, I've seen way worse than that. I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, but if I was to say like, I'd rather not see it. Sure. I'd rather see it where they don't have to worry about uh, having a huge push. I'd rather see it where they can just have the better car but you know is what it is um Clyde Ritter says I put my two grills in the light up 2019 Harvick Millennial and the Harvick beer oh man <sighs> that Millennial car was good the liquid color of that Millennial car was spectacular it's one of those I wish I hadn't ever gotten rid of a little bit it's, it's not a super favorite of mine but uh, I've met Denny twice, and each time he spent a lot of time with me. Uh, the second time I met was 2021, and he spent a good 45 minutes talking to me. It was at Charlotte during a tour, funny enough. Oh, okay. That's, that's a little easier than at the track then because um, it, it's uh, a little tougher when you have the uh, when they're at the racetrack with all the fans around. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, I said I think, uh, I think Denny Hamlin, I actually have a lot of <laughs> – I have a couple. I need to get that car signed, that car signed. And a couple of Daytona 500 signed from uh, Denny yet. So, fingers crossed, I'll get to cross them at some point. Uh, let's see. I would love to meet Elliot and Stenhouse. Uh, you'll definitely have more trouble meeting Elliot. His fans are nuts. I mean, I can say it because I'm even in that crowd a little bit, but I'm telling you, I have never seen fans crazier than at a Chase Elliott appearance. I mean, good grief. Just keep your balance. You'll get knocked around a little bit. Those people are nuts. Uh, let's see. Hope to get an Elliot or a Larson uh, to sign a car. Um, if you're wanting to get Larson to sign a car, go to a dirt race. I mean, Larson is so good with fans, especially at a dirt race. It's a lot easier, so it's, it makes it a, a lot simpler to do that. But I, I definitely think you would um, you'd be able to get two to three cars and a picture. And I mean, they're just they're so much more accommodating. So, dirt races is the best place to go. Uh, met Harvick too at a restaurant in Charlotte. He was super nice. I'm not going to lie, that's a rarity. I have met Harvick a grand total of three times. One time was okay, and the other two are not good. So I think it's just maybe at the track stuff. I'm not 100% sure what it is. Um, but I had, um, I did get my Kansas win of, from 2016 that he was at. Uh, I did get that one signed with the, whole, uh, the 2018 race. And then he won the 2018 race, and I tried to get that car signed, and he just didn't have any of it. Um, and then, yeah, skip total skip in 2020 when I tried to get one. So it's just, I don't know, sometimes you just catch them on their bad days, but um, other times they're, um, you know, they're just fine. How long have I been collecting diecast Since um, 2006? Um I didn't get them near as often. 2006, I was still in uh, middle school, so I obviously didn't get very many at all at that time. Uh, so the 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 pace of them coming in came up a lot after I was able to, you know, uh, get through school and all that. And um, yeah, so 2006 was when I got my first one. My first car was a 2006 Scott Riggs Auto Value bumper to bumper car. Um, it actually took me a really long time to get a Casey Kane car, oddly enough. And, um, yeah, I think my first, my first car I ever sold on eBay was in like college. I want to say like, I actually got into that kind of early. So, uh, hoping Larson is at the dirt nationals in February. I assume he would be, but it, it could be depending on if, if, uh, if his wife wants time off, they may not start racing till later. Uh, how would I pack a car to go to the racetrack? So there's a couple ways. I have two packing methods. Uh, one of them, if I'm packing just a couple of cars, I bring them with their box and everything. And then I bring an envelope or some type of padded thing uh, in. Uh, this weekend when I was trying to get a Larson 
car signed. He wasn't there, but I carried it in a cooler uh, with the just in its box and everything. Because uh, again, it's a dirt track. You're way more laid back there. You can carry a whole box. At a cup track, you can't carry as much. So generally, I put the cars in an envelope, like a padded envelope, and I make sure that there's no like no COTs. Sorry, no COTs go in those envelopes. Just Gen Six cars. Um, and then I have a couple of them. I can put about two to three padded envelopes in a book bag, two cars per envelope, so about six to eight cars per, per book bag. Um, and then I just kind of have to remember which one's in what pocket. I'm always very careful about where I set my book bag and, and that kind of stuff, make sure I don't drop it, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, let's see. Could I meet Stenhouse easily? Uh, again, at a dirt track, almost for certain. Um, let's see. I think it depends on their schedule too sometimes. Definitely. Definitely a big one. Met Harvick in 2019 and 2025, 2022, I'm thinking, at Dover. Uh, met Denny, at Larson, Briscoe, and Harvick at Richmond. Wow. Must have had a really good Richmond race there, man. Uh, uh, I have a 911 Tribute Larson I'd love to get signed. Well, the best way to do that is, like I said, dirt track rules. Um, that's the place to go. Um, I think he's running in Indiana, Indiana somewhere tonight, but he, he's going to have a whole sprint car series next year at a bunch of dirt tracks. So they're midweek, but if you can get to one of those, I'm telling you, they open the pits after the race and all the drivers just stand by their car. You can go get a picture. You can go get something. They're just, it's super accommodating. Like you don't have to try that hard to get stuff signed at a dirt track. It's not hard at all. You are all but guaranteed to get something signed if you just go into the pits after the race and wait by their car. They always come out. You don't have to rush. Don't do it during the race because, like I said, every time the race is over, they'll wait by their cars. They'll make sure they get a picture with every fan who came. Thank you for coming. Like, it's, I'm telling you, it's the most fan accommodating race I've ever been to. Hopefully is evolution. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I can travel to the U.S. from Canada to see my favorite drivers. Hopefully you can move to the U.S. from Canada. I'm just saying we got a pretty darn good uh, country down here. <laughs> uh, Jet Johnson says, how many dirt midget diecasts do I have? Because I'm looking forward to the Chase A-Shock. I have the, I believe the A-Shock midget is only in 118th. So there are, there's that midget. I have Kyle Larson's uh, Chili Bowl Midget, and I have Casey Kane's Chili Bowl Midget from 2008. So two of them are still on the way in. I've never not seen them yet, but I do have the Casey Kane uh, Midget available, or not available, but I have it in my collection. I saw Casey Evolution, but he was going to the driver's meeting, so I didn't want to bother him. And that's the nice thing is you don't have to bother him because you know he'll be at the car after the race. So that's that's kind of a bonus is that, you know, um, you know if you wanted to, chat with them or get a picture or something is you know that once the race is over you go into the pits and that's where they'll be all right need a little more drink all right do I have chase elliott's snowball derby diecast I do I actually have one on my site still available so there is one still available on the website. Uh, love to live up. Uh, I love it up here uh, to live in Canada, but <laughs> but for sure I'll travel to the states a lot. Hey, I honestly, if the border got more easy to go through, I would love to go up to Canada. Their snowmobiling in, especially in the western part of the country, is fantastic. I would love to get up there and do some snowmobiling. Um, honestly, I think it, a lot of the the issues came with the the COVID stuff because I mean I'm in a I'm in in Iowa. We didn't do any lockdowns or anything like that, and we did we did pretty pretty good. I mean you don't live that close to your neighbors, so you know everybody just kind of mind their manners and everybody got by just fine. Uh, but in order to get into Canada, I think you had to have a whole bunch of stuff, and so like um, I think you had to have the vaccine and stuff, and I never got it because you know when you're 27 and healthy it's basically useless as long as you're not working in a crowded area which i wasn't so unfortunately i i haven't gotten to go fingers crossed everything you know eases up people smart up a little bit we can all go up there because i would love to go up and ride some snowmobile up there uh let's see when will the larson robo car be released probably in another month or so in the next month we should see just about all the rest of the race wins from last year because we're still missing quite a few, if I do the math right. I mean, we still haven't seen Bubba's car. So Larson's Phoenix came out really early compared to, like, Bubba's Talladega car and stuff. Uh, let's see. Any word from the Ty Gibb Jumpman scheme? I don't believe so. It was hard enough to get that rich or that Kansas car made. I don't think we're going to see that Ty Gibbs one. 
I've been to Canada, rode dirt bikes up uh, on the trails up there with some buddies. It's a, I'm telling you, it's a beautiful area. Um, haven't gone outside the U.S., just went to races across the U.S. Hey, the U.S. is big enough to be a lot of countries. I mean, if you look at it, U.S. is the size of just about all of Europe. So, you know, when people are like, oh, you don't, you haven't left your country, it's like, do you understand how big the country is? Um, but I've only been, I don't know if I've actually left U.S. territories. The, the Virgin Islands is not technically outside the U.S. territories, so I've never actually needed a par, uh, passport. Uh, let's see, that was similar in Florida, although we did do it uh, the first 14, but then after that, we've been free ever since. Uh, yeah, Florida, Florida's another one like that where they just kind of stayed open and, and things kind of worked out for them. Um, let's see, I'm pretty sure I could maybe meet DJ Kennington because, you know, the NASCAR Pinty series, um, probably, and they're probably pretty accommodating for, you know, drivers. Have I rode a dirt bike at all? I have not. Uh, Jet Johnson, what got me into racing dirt or NASCAR? So, uh, NASCAR, it was watching the 2003 Daytona 500 and there was just something about cars racing that i don't know it just caught me i mean my my dad used to watch the races we've never we had never gone to a race or anything but i'm telling you by 2004 when i was watching casey kane as a rookie i got hooked i was just like oh man this is so cool like you know the the high speed the 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 racing in general just really caught me there was something about it i just really loved it and then um, 2006, uh, we got into go-kart racing and raced for a few years. Uh, unfortunately, with the family business stuff, things got just way too busy. Never could get to the racetrack. I mean, at some points, we'd only get to the track two to three times a year, which if you know anything about racing, that's not enough to have you know even a good good idea of what your setups are and stuff. It's a, it's a lot harder. So, um, you know, when by the time you buy tires and all that stuff, it just got too much so uh yeah unfortunately i didn't get to race very long but i did have a pretty good time the first couple years um because we did race a lot more often and um we didn't know squat about setting up the cart i basically learned later on kind of what the cart was actually doing between like if it was really loose a little tight needed different adjustments but um yeah unfortunately just didn't have enough time to do it so uh, but that's what I did, and then obviously um, throughout high school I was I played a lot of sports, so I, I got a little not less interested. Well, I'd say less interested. I didn't follow it very as closely, um, so I did miss a lot of races in the 2011 to 2014 range, probably 2013. After 2013, when I got out of high school, I definitely started watching a lot more races. Like I mean, I had even in college I had Daytona 500 parties and stuff. Like it was. I always had a, you know, the NASCAR race kind of pegged on my weekend. And then, um, like I said, once Kane won, it was a lot more watching. Uh, let's see. I hope DJ Kennington returns to the U.S. NASCAR again soon. Honestly, I, I'm going to say I doubt it. With the sponsor thing the way it is, I think it'll be tougher. My uncle has a 1993 Dale Sr. car in his warehouse he owns. Uh, he has a total of three or four cars that raced. Uh, and the, then one, oh, sorry, and then the ones... Uh, with the junior oh okay i see what you're saying and one of them has the the junior paint scheme on it uh i remember watching nascar in the mid to late 2000s and got away from it we would watch the daytona 500 but other than that forgot about it until 2019 when i got tickets for my birthday i'm telling you guys going to the track just rejuvenates it like uh, um i mean i was a fan starting in 2004 i didn't get to go to a race till 2012 and even that was you get to the track early but you know it was a one day thing and by the time i went in 2017 that was the first time I was like, I'm buying tickets, I'm going on my own. And I was there all day at the track every day, and I was like, oh, this is so much more fun. Like, getting the the, the fan walk and all that stuff, going through the midway, all all that. It was like, okay, this there's a whole other side of it I hadn't even been you know enjoying yet. So uh, once I discovered that, I, I really rejuvenated it. Uh, let's see. If NASCAR Cup goes to Canada, that would be awesome. I would love to see them up in Canada and Mexico, for that matter. I think NASCAR Cup Series could definitely expand into those areas. Um, so I, I hope eventually they get the opportunity to go there. I think expanding the Cup Series to a lot of new tracks would be very beneficial. I think um, I want to say the Iceberg had a, um, a mo uh, not a movie, a video today or maybe yesterday about racetracks. Um, and how they need to go to one date and outside of like, you know, Bristol, Daytona, Talladega kind of ones. And, you know, I, I actually really think that's a great idea. I think moving one date from Kansas to Chicago makes sense. Kansas is not a very populated track. It was really empty here in the spring. The fall date's always a little bit bigger. 
but it was pretty empty in the spring moving one of those to chicago moving a date to iowa moving just giving uh these tracks a little bit of new life because so many of them they would totally sell out if they had just one opportunity to do it and then the question from there is um you know can they sell out regularly and i think that would be a, a lot easier to do with only one date uh let's see watch a few races in 2013 started hardcore watching in 2014 up till now and uh, I would love to see Cody wear Nutri- N- Nurtec. That's what it is. Nurtec diecast he made. I would, too. I actually think that Nurtec car is a really good-looking race car, even if uh, it doesn't run well. But I think that's a really cool paint scheme. All right, guys. Well, we have crossed the hour mark. I am in need of giving my voice a rest. I think I have a, uh, what they call a vocal hernia, which means you talk too much. Not surprising. But... Um, yeah, so I'm going to wrap this one up. Um, I will have a stream on Sunday. No no Saturday stream, just a Sunday stream this week. Um, but we will do another stream on Sunday with just the scoring monitor. So as soon as uh, the race is about to go green, that's usually when I go live. I try to get them up just a little ahead of time if possible. But um, So you can check it out there later. Any car you saw today should be on the website. I think the only one I'm out of is Chandler Smith cars. I need to get another one in if I can. But... Um, but otherwise, remember to use that promo code race craze. I'll actually ask uh, uh, Clyde Ritter to put the. Uh, it's got the um, the promo code. So anytime you're looking for a diecast, go to the uh, rasdiecast.com. All that goes to support in this channel and allowing me to do all these reviews because without it, I would not be able to do all this stuff. So um, thank you guys all for watching. I hope you have enjoyed, and we will see you in the next diecast review.